When you start making more and more use of intersheet formulas and functions, you will find that you're going to need the name facility within Excel. What the name facility allows you to do is name cells and or ranges and then use those names in your functions and formulas. Let's take the shop sales file, which has a number of sheets, a summary sheet that we're going to place our formulas into, a retail sales sheet, which has the retail sales for a set week or eight shops, and then a non-consecutive sheet that shows you consumption of fruit, vegetables, and meat for three individuals. Now, there are a number of ways of actually naming cells and ranges. So if we look at Bob, we know we can add this range up here and place it in the summary by using a formula. Let's place that formula here, equals sum, open brackets, select the sheet, select the cells. Don't forget to press return rather than clicking back. And we can see that the formula there is equals sum, open brackets, non-consecutive, exclamation mark, B2 to F4. And if we place a little comment marker in front of there, we'll be able to see that on the sheet. Now, if we use a named range, the formula becomes a lot shorter. So let's go back to non-consecutive. If we want to name a range, we select the range, as we've done already, and we decide what we want to call it. Method number one of naming a range is to go up to this little white box here, which actually, if you hover, says name box. Click in. We don't need to delete what's already there, but I tend to make life a little easier for me. And then I need to type a name for the range. Named range names cannot contain spaces. That's one thing to remember. So I can call it Bob. They must also be unique. So you can't have two Bobs. And if you need a second Bob, you'll have to think of a naming convention. So Bob 2, Bob 3, etc. Now I've selected the range, clicked in the name box. I've deleted what was already there, although I didn't need to because it was highlighted. I've typed Bob. What I then need to do is remember to press return. If I just click away, it actually forgets that you type Bob there. If I press return, it enters Bob and Bob is saved. And what I can do is click away, come back to the name box and in the drop down, you'll see we have Bob. We also have shot one, but Bob's what we're after, which then jumps and highlights Bob. So that's method number one. You highlight the range, you go to the name box, type the name in, return. Another method is to highlight your new range and then go to the formulas ribbon and you'll see there's an option here called name manager. Well, to the right of there, I can choose a define name and then define name. I need to give my new range a name. Now what Excel does is it picks the nearest word and it's chosen fruit because fruit's just here. I actually want to call this range Alice. When you create a name through the name manager, you actually get to choose the scope. Now the scope means where this range exists. The default is workbook, so I'm calling it Alice, which means I can then use it from anywhere in the rest of the workbook. If, however, I want to restrict that named range to a particular sheet, I can choose which of the sheets from my current workbook to apply that to. Well, I'd like to leave it as a workbook scope, which means I can then reference and use Alice anywhere in this whole workbook. You'll see here the range has been picked up because I highlighted it. So Alice actually refers to that range of cells. OK. And we might as well do Mary while we're here. Highlight Mary. Define name. I'm going to call it Mary. Again, the scope is a workbook, so I can use the named range anywhere in the whole workbook. And it's selecting these cells. OK. So I now have three named ranges. I can see them in the drop list. Alice, Bob and Mary. If I then want to make use of those in my summary sheet, I go to the summary sheet where I would like a total of Bob. You're not going to believe how easy this is. I simply put equals sum open brackets, Bob, close brackets, return 35. Now that is a lot shorter function than the original one. Same for Alice equals sum open brackets, Alice. You'll notice also that as you start to type a named range, it will appear in a little drop list below. So I can double click to pick that. And then just like a normal function with a normal range, we don't need to close the brackets. So return and I get some Alice. And then the last one equals some Mary. So that's using named ranges. Now with the ranges, you will want to sometimes delete ranges or change their range area. And we can do that through the name manager. So from the name manager, you can see I've got Alice, Bob, Mary and shop one. If I want to remove a range, I simply select the one I no longer require and delete. 
I'm asked if I'm sure, and shop one range is then removed. Not the actual cells and their contents, just the named range. Of the others, Alice, Bob and Mary, if I were to add in more cells to each of these, so for example, Mary might need extending, I can come down to the reference, and you can see that it picks it up and shows me, so I know I've got the right area. I can then expand the area by clicking and highlighting, and we get an extra set of cells added to Mary. Come back up to the search box and click the return button. This is now the new range for Mary. Make sure, however, that you click the tick here to accept this new range, not the close button. If you click the close button, the Mary's range has actually not been changed. So we click the little tick, that's then accepted and close. And when we have a look at the summary, we see that Mary's value is still 43. But if we were to add in some new values below here, and then look at the summary, Mary has now shot up to 188 because she's adding in those few extra cells. Now, if we look at our retail sales, we see we have shop one to shop eight. And we could create a named range for each shop by simply highlighting Monday to Sunday, clicking in the box here and typing shop one. Or we can ask the name manager to create the eight named ranges for us by simply highlighting all of the cells, including the headings, then go up to create from selection in our named manager section. And you'll see it says create names from the values in and it's assumed the top row because it's seen that they are text values in your top row. So it's done that correctly. If however you wanted to use the left column or the bottom row or the right column, if that's where your labels were, then that's achievable too by moving this tick. Well, mine are in the top row, that's fine. Okay, now to all outward appearances, it would appear nothing has happened. But if you look in the name manager, you now have shop one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice that although our cells contained shop space one, the named range is shop underscore one shop underscore two, shop underscore three. So that's a quick way there of creating a number of named ranges that we can then use in our summary. So I can say equals sum, open brackets, shop, and all the shop items appear here, all the shop name ranges, so shop one. The average is equals average, open brackets. Again, if I just start typing shop, it will give me them all to choose from. So you can see I can use the named range, not just in the sum function, but in any mathematical function, proving that again with the min and also the max. And you can do exactly the same for shop two, shop three, shop four, shop five, shop six, shop seven, and shop eight. So that's using a named range as opposed to absolute cell references. They're much shorter, they're easier to use, and they make the management of formulas and functions that are cross-sheet much easier to control.